Hey guys, welcome back to another Cyber Hacks. Today I'm going to be going over a few things in regards to what the current job market looks like for cybersecurity, what certification is going to benefit you going forward in 2024, and how are you going to be able to land a job? Which in today's market, believe it or not, people are still hiring, but they need people with experience. But that can go both ways. So hear me out because right now we have a shortage of people fulfilling jobs in the cybersecurity sector and the reason that is because a lot of companies don't even know what they're looking for and that's really honest uh i work in a place where even hr has no idea what certain criteria are required for the position and rely on the engineers and the managers and the, uh, the leads to kind of dictate and use their knowledge to get the individuals internally or you know to whether promote internally or to hire from the outside so i just want to go over a few numbers here and of course the infamous linkedin finding jobs here, seeing what's on the market, what's out there that is going to intrigue you to sign up and hopefully land a position with one of these nice offerings. Now, the first thing I want to mention is that even before you get that far of which company you want to work for, it's which company is actually going to be willing to take you in and just interview you to even get to that point, right? Because you need some experience, you need some education, you need some certifications on your belt to even get to there now. Uh, a lot of it seems like, you know, in today's market, it seems where if you don't have a certification, you may not even be considered. And, and it's just a automatic filtered out, which kind of sucks nowadays, right? At bare minimum, people are just trying to get certifications even without the experience whether you know it's a OSCP, CISSP, CEH, or whatever, Security Plus, uh, for the certification that do require you to have experience, people are even obtaining them without the experience. How's that even possible? But companies are looking for those certifications and labeling it entry level. There's no way you can get a CISSP, CISSP without the five-year required uh, equivalent and in order to obtain the full-fledged certification uh, in the words of ISC squared. So anyway, I wanted to go over a little more details as to check this out. I mean, we're at 72 national average. If you look at that comparison of the numbers available in cybersecurity, workers relative to employees demand in a particular location displayed as a percentage, right? So the national average is 70%, meaning that there are only enough cybersecurity workers in the United States to fill 72% 70, of cybersecurity jobs that employees demand. So meaning there is another 28% jobs, 28% of the jobs that are not filled, but it's hard because not everyone is going to be, uh, you know, like they're not actually qualified for the position. They're not uh, knowledgeable in, in, in regards to what products the company uses. Not every company has the luxury of bringing someone so fresh that they can just train off the bat and, you know, spend all this money on training and, and getting them up to speed, right? They somehow... A lot of these positions, and I know because I've sat through so many as far as interviews and, and higher, you know, going for smaller companies, they don't have that space or that room or the funds to bring someone in, uh, just one person to fill a position and then train them for X amount of days or weeks. Meanwhile, they need someone right away to actually, you know, do the operational stuff. It could, you know... It could be where someone just abruptly left or, you know, someone was really shady and they had to fire them right away. So that 28% could possibly be from, you know, just the urgency of having someone really skilled and someone really knowledgeable to fulfill that position. It doesn't necessarily mean just because there is a percentage of, you know, open jobs that, that people are still looking for positions or trying to fill positions that these are 
at all, uh, you know, entry level positions. N not by any means. Not that's not always the case. All right. So, and of course, the certifications of requirements, which is interesting here. Um, not once has it mentioned the one I'm trying to obtain now, which is the OSCP. Uh, Security Plus, um, look at this, satisfies. This This number between Security Plus and CISSP was once pretty, pretty close. But, and now you see Security Plus is the baseline of this. Uh, just trying to get a job, get your foot into cybersecurity. Uh, CISSP is uh, second runner up. And it's not an easy exam. I mean, I took it a couple of times. I did pass it. I do have my ISC square CISSP certification. I also have the SSCP prior to that. Um, I do have my security plus, And luckily for me, I had the security plus since uh, way before they even implemented the, you know, three year renewal program. I'm a lifetime security plus certified uh, person. Uh, and I forgot, I think that was over 10 years ago. Uh, I took that. Um, I don't have any of these other certifications, but of course, these other certifications, in my honest opinion, HR don't even know what these are for the most part. All right. Uh, so let's go to the opening requesting certification. So a lot of positions. Oh, and I, I, I made a mistake. So the Security Plus and the CISSP are pretty equal as far as what uh, hiring managers or hiring companies or organizations are looking for on a, in an individual that has uh, cybersecurity experience. And these numbers are one, they prefer to have someone CISSP. And that just alone, that shows you that they want someone who is more seasoned, who has the years of experience, and they know the uh, security aspect, and they have knowledge in that already, right? So they're not newbies whatsoever they're not entry level they're not beginners they're not junior but on the other side the other side of the coin the flip side of all that they there's another requirement of eighty one thousand uh people or jobs or or you know companies wanting a baseline a minimum of security plus certification which shows that you have a general concept of hardware uh, IP addressing and, and routers and switches and all the security lingo and concepts that you would gather and that you would gain from obtaining the Security Plus certification, which is great. Uh, and of course, CISA, uh, that goes more towards the, in my honest opinion, it goes more towards the compliance and, and regulatory side of things. Um, and of course, the certifications start dwindle, dwindling down lesser and lesser because it's just not as a popular certification to acquire for passing the HR filter. And of course, that is always going to be the case unless someone or something comes out on top of CISSP, uh, which is right now the gold standard of certifications. There is gonna be you know, a lot of people that I even know who does not have the years of experience have been taking a CISSP and claiming that they have the years of experience. But meanwhile, the best experience you can possibly have is real life experience and working in the industry. And of course, you guys are going to be like, how the hell am I supposed to get in if I don't have this? And if I don't have this, how am I ever going to get in? Right? It's always going to be a mixture of both. But there are going to be your gateway to obtain all this, meaning there is going to be that company. If you keep on applying, you keep on, uh, you know, putting your full efforts in there, someone, some way, you're going to be sitting through an interview and you're, you're going to make sure that uh, besides knowing things in the industry, meaning exams and certifications that you have, you have to be well prepared to present yourself, sell yourself. You have to be ecstatic. You have to be energetic when you're on the interview. You have to ask proper questioning. And of course, those are the things that I will be doing going forward with some of you individuals who have emailed me in regards to reviewing your resume. If you're still looking for a job, great. Some of you have actually reached out to me and said that you landed a great job and it was, uh, you know, I put out some great information for you to uh, understand. And that's awesome because I'm still going to be putting out more information like this. So I want to thank you guys for being here and please remember to hit that like, comment, subscribe. It just supports me. 
that makes me want to put out more great videos like this. Thank you, and I'll see you guys again really soon. Bye.